in applying the teaching of scripture on the topic of divorce and remarriage, we encounter a lot of thorny and complicated and confusing issues of life. But in answering those issues, we sometimes get better clarity on how good the biblical principles actually are. Today's question is a good example of those kinds of situations. Desimon Fields asks the following, what about a spouse who keeps draining the bank account and refuses to stop? Uh, now, this is a big deal. Uh, this really does apply into our lives in very practical ways. I don't want to have like a, a, a a quick answer as though my answer doesn't affect real people's lives here. So I want to be careful with it. Uh, gambling is a real serious issue. People are addicted to gambling. They're, they're spending away the resources of their families against the will of their family. Um, frivolity of just weird things people spend their money on and dangerously so. Get rich quick schemes that people get sucked into or excessive donations to Kenneth Copeland. Even to make this worse, allow, allow me to show you the Bible's opinion about the person who squanders the resources that should go to their family. First Timothy 5.8 says, if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is huge. Like these are really, really strong statements. It's a big, big deal when you are not providing for your family and your loved ones. It's different if you're handicapped, you're disabled, things like that. These are obviously exceptions to this, this policy here, right? You're widowed or those, those types of situations. Uh, poverty is a different scenario. We're talking about somebody who of their own will and of their own free choices squanders the resources that belong to their family or otherwise won't provide for them. It's a big, big deal. People are really going through this. It's not just a theory. This is a reality for a lot of people. On one hand, I don't want to answer too rashly and justify wrongful divorces by just, in all honesty, by saying, yeah, if they are keep draining your bank account, divorce them. I, I think that is too broad of a statement. There's no clear allowance in scripture for divorcing somebody, even though this is a grievous sin, even though it's horrible, even though it's worse than an unbeliever if you're doing this. We do have clear statements like with adultery or like with the desertion or the unwillingness of an unbeliever. But on the other hand, on the other side, I don't want to say you can never divorce over this issue because I can imagine scenarios where it is justified under some very clear biblical principles. And those principles are endangering the health and seriously endangering the health and safety of other people. This is, according to my teaching, my understanding of scripture, this is a very real exception to the general rule of not getting a divorce. When someone's endangering your actual health and safety. So if the squandering of resources means that you don't have food to eat, that you are becoming homeless, that it's causing harm to yourself and your children, then this may be a real legitimate reason for divorce. So I would say it's not simply the blanket statement that they're wasting our money, therefore I can divorce them, but rather what harm is being caused by this waste? And if it's great harm, then it can justify divorce. I wanna be careful with this, but let me remind you for a second in my bigger video, which I'll link below, um, why I say this. Jesus's rule about not getting divorced except for sexual immorality, that is the general rule. That's the general truth, right? Adultery is pretty much the single clearest cause for divorce. But even in Jesus's own time, we have good reason to think that there would have been other exceptions to the rule. In fact, Jesus's original audience would have expected other exceptions. They were always juggling hard, difficult scenarios. What if this happens in the law, in dealing with the law? They, they knew there were clear-cut teachings, but that there were exceptions to those rules based upon other priorities like uh, human safety and well-being. This is clear because Paul even offers another exception in 1 Corinthians seven fifteen to support the idea that there can be exceptions to this general rule of only because of adultery. A quick example of this is about the Sabbath, right? You're told not to work on the Sabbath, but Jesus makes it clear that you can save a life on the Sabbath, right? Even, even an animal's life. Your animal falls into the pit, you pick it up and carry it out. That's actually a lot of labor. That would have violated their understanding of the Sabbath. But he's like, yeah, but you're saving the life of an animal. Or Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath, which is labor. I mean, that's work. That is a glorious, miraculous work. But it's okay because it's a healing you're providing on the Sabbath. It's not like you're just doing normal labor. This is an exception to a general rule. And so in the same sense, I would say, and this is principle number 13 in my 16 principles about marriage and divorce in my video, I say radical danger or harm justifies separation and possibly divorce. Possibly divorce because you're seeking restoration, you're seeking repentance, you're seeking change. But it can happen. So my view would be something like this. If somebody keeps draining the bank account, that is not clearly an exception, but it can become an exception depending on the consequences and the costs, the harm and the danger that it's creating that can be the exception, not just the draining of the bank account. Perhaps you should consider other options if you're in this scenario. Can you make your own bank account? Can you isolate your money from them? 
um, this is this is rough, but surely that's better than a divorce, right? Having your own bank account, much better than getting an actual divorce. Perhaps a temporary separation could do some good here instead. Perhaps there are other steps you can take. Certainly divorce would be the last thing you'd want to consider if, if there's anything else that you can do that's going to fix the scenario or at least take away the danger and the harm aspect of it. So I would handle this case by case. I would, I would want to sit down with the person and counsel them and help them work through and think through this problem and try to survey the options and seek if there's another way out. And if all else fails, I think divorce is a, is a real option on the table depending on the harm that's being brought. As always with this kind of thing, you'd want to divest yourself of any kind of bitterness towards your spouse. This is, this is a, not a call that's being made because of the hardness of my heart or I just hate them now. That's really what I'm looking for a reason because I just hate them. Uh, that is a very different kind of thing. You want to get rid of all that first, have that sort of cross posture of graciousness and forgiveness and love towards them first. And then maybe you can see clearly with godly counsel, even multiple godly counselors to try to work through the issue and figure out what the best option is. If you happen to be going through this situation, my heart goes out to you. Um, this is not good. It's not. I've seen it before myself. And uh, may God give you wisdom. May God give you wisdom. Just seek to honor Christ with all that you do and maybe get together with a few different godly counselors to try to work through your problem. And if you want to learn how to think biblically about everything, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. I'm Mike Winger and I produce free content online all the time to help people learn how to think biblically about everything.